In this lesson, we will be observing the world as chemists do. Our goal is to classify matter, that is, stuff, in a few different ways. We will start with the well-known phases of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Then we'll look a little closer at whether something is a pure substance or a mixture. Lastly, we'll break down pure substances into elements versus compounds. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to use these words to describe items in the real world. Most people can already differentiate between solids, liquids, and gases. In solids, the particles are held close together and don't move around much. In liquids, the particles are still close together, but they're able to move past each other. Liquids are less ordered than solids. In gases, the particles are far apart and move very quickly throughout the container. Gases are much, much more disordered than liquids and solids are. One of the skills you will practice in this class is zooming in and out between the macroscopic scale and the microscopic scale. The macroscopic scale represents things we see with our own eyes. When we zoom into the level of atoms, however, we've entered the microscopic scale, also known as the atomic scale. As chemists, you will find the microscopic scale very useful in analyzing the composition and properties of a substance. While solid liquid gas describes a compound based on its phase of matter, chemists seek to describe substances based on their composition. That is, what type of atoms it contains and how are those atoms distributed? The first question to ask about a substance's composition is whether it is uniform throughout. If it is, we call that a pure substance. If it is not, we call that a mixture. For example, a dirty snowball may contain ice, dirt, twigs, or even worse. It's a mixture of these things and even more. Different parts of the snowball have different properties due to their different composition. On the other hand, a cube of ice contains only molecules of water. No matter where we zoom in on the ice cube, all we ever see are frozen water molecules. An ice cube is a pure substance. Pure substances can further be divided into elements and compounds by asking the question, can it be simplified chemically? Elements cannot be simplified any further. For example, a gold bar is a pure element. It contains only atoms of gold within. A pure element will contain only atoms of that element and nothing else. On the other hand, an ice cube has atoms of hydrogen and oxygen, and they are bonded in a constant two to one ratio. An ice cube is therefore a pure compound. Of the elements, there are only 118 in the universe, and every element is represented on the periodic table. The smallest form of an element is a single atom, which we often represent using colored spheres. Chemists have ways of separating mixtures and compounds into pure elements. For instance, by running current through water, we can separate the atoms of hydrogen and oxygen. If we return to mixtures, we can further divide them by asking the question, is the mixture uniform throughout? A heterogeneous mixture, like our dirty snowball, is not uniform throughout. Some sections may have more or less of one substance. On the other hand, a homogeneous mixture has all of its compounds evenly mixed together. A good example of a homogeneous mixture is air, which is composed of a mixture of different gases. But no matter where we look, the gases are mixed evenly together. It's not like one section of a room could contain lots of oxygen and another section of the room contains far less. All right, time to practice what we learned. I'd like you to describe each of the following, uh, the phase of all right, time to practice what we learned. Please describe each of the following using the phase of matter and then label it as an element, compound, homogeneous mixture, or heterogeneous mixture. Please pause the video right now and write your answer. Then I will go over the solution. The answer to this will start with the salad. In a salad, obviously, the particles are close together and they do not move around much. A salad is a solid. The next question to ask is, does a salad have constant properties and composition? Well, a salad is clearly made up of different things, so we would classify salad as a mixture. Next, is a salad uniform throughout? 
well, I see some sections that have more broccoli and some sections with more tomato. So it is definitely not uniform throughout. A salad is a heterogeneous mixture. Moving on to Gatorade, we see that the particles are close together, but they are able to move past each other. Therefore, Gatorade is a liquid. Now, does Gatorade have constant properties and composition? Well, this is a tough question, but I know that Gatorade is made of many different components, including water, salt, and sugar, each of which, each of which has its own properties and elements. Therefore, Gatorade is also a mixture. But I know that the salt and the sugar and the water are evenly mixed throughout the entire beverage. It's not saltier at the top and sweeter at the bottom. The distribution is uniform throughout, therefore Gatorade is a homogeneous mixture. Moving on, we see an atomic scale image of the gas chlorine. We know it's a gas because the atoms are separated and moving about rapidly and randomly in every direction. Now, does chlorine gas have constant properties in composition? Well, yes, it does. This entire sample is made up of the same thing, which is chlorine. Furthermore, the sample contains only atoms of chlorine, so it is considered a pure element. Moving on, we see an atomic scale representation of a salt crystal. We see the atoms are held closely together and are very precisely ordered. Therefore, the salt crystal is a solid. Furthermore, it looks like the crystal has constant properties and composition. No portion of this crystal contains a different makeup than any other portion, so we would consider it a pure substance. However, there are two types of atoms present, so it can't be a pure element. The atoms are bonded in a one-to-one -one ratio, and this salt crystal is a compound.